Hi David, you are um, the chairman of the Pet Education Training and Behaviour Council, also known as the Pet BC. Um, would you like to just tell me a little bit about what the Pet BC does and also um, how it started really? Well, I'd be delighted. Thank you very much indeed. I should make it clear that I am not personally a dog trainer, but I have quite a lot of knowledge of dogs in general. And I was asked by a small group that was set up oh, 10, 10 more years ago now, um, if I would be chairman because the whole dog training landscape is quite complicated and they felt they needed somebody who knew about dogs but was nevertheless independent. Um, um, Many years ago, what was then the Companion Animal Welfare Council put out a report about dog trainers and their report said that the whole sector was in chaos because there are so many different attitudes, philosophies and approaches in dog training that very few um, people can get together and really agree. In fact, I sometimes say that I, I can get two dog, pre, dog trainers to agree and that is that they both say that somebody else is doing it wrong. Yeah, absolutely. As a result, the uh, Companion Animal Welfare Council asked Sir Colin Spedding, who was a highly respected moderator, to host a series of meetings to which all factions of the animal training and canine behaviour sector were invited to host a series of meetings at which they would, would try and come to some agreement and conclusions. Well, they did finally set out a code of conduct, but it, they were very difficult and complicated meetings. But as a result, a group of people got together and said they would like to form a council that would oversee the whole sector um, and encourage everybody to work together. And that was the Pet Education, Training and Behaviour Council, um, which is still um, still working very hard and is still very active, has, has just uh, launched its new website at uh, petbc.org. And what it does is to try and bring people together to set standards, and in fact, the standards which PetBC has set, the roles of the different um, sections of the dog training fraternity have now been pretty well accepted and were for, did form the basis of the occupational standards that were eventually approved by the government and the skills sector council. So we are, that was our background. There are, it's, as they say on the BBC, there are other organisations which are available, but the Pet PC was the first and I, I like to think that it is the most important and influential. I am the principal of the Cambridge Institute of Dog Behaviour and Training and when the Pet BC originally published those roles we started using them immediately for our students and members to have a look at to get an understanding of what actually is required for the various different roles that there are in the dog training, organ in the dog training fraternity so to speak and um, people have found those incredibly helpful as a marker of what to be aiming for when they're learning and Get it reaching a, a, an acceptable standard of qualification. Well, that is what they were designed for, so I'm really pleased to hear that. As far as the future is concerned, we have been offering a higher diploma um, for a number of years, and this will continue to be developed. And it, it, it sets the standards for the future, which we hope more and more people and more and more organisations will take, will take part in. Because we're a very open organisation, we are very happy to accept all sorts of ideas and uh, philosophies of dog training, um, so long as they fulfil the basic standards of the Code of Conduct, which was originally put together under Sir Colin Spedding's auspices. Lovely. It sounds a very exciting future ahead for the PBC, and I wish you the very best of luck with that. Ross, thank you very much indeed. Brilliant.